Adam C., he was viewing uh, last week's episode, actually, Nems Linux. Did you mm-hmm. take that one? Yes. Okay. So, Adam um, C. says... Yeah, on the episode, Becca, it's just a little yes. bit of a recap, because uh, not everybody had a chance to watch episode number five, um, five... Five sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Yes. Five sixty-eight. I've lost all track of There's all There's just a time. few of them. Not everybody has had a chance to watch episode 568 just yet. So just recapping a little bit, Becca and I got talking about compatibility between Linux, alternative software, and Microsoft Windows. Mm-hmm. Particularly, LibreOffice as a Microsoft Word and Excel replacement yes. for... Word and Excel, and compatibility between offices where you've got to send it to somebody who is limited to Windows. Right, and this is interesting because this is a question that's been just like burning inside of me Mm. that I've been really wanting to ask. So I'm happy that you covered it. I haven't... Mm watched it yet okay well you gotta do but that. i need to it's only a because week old. i'm hoping that it yeah it only it only happened a week ago <laughs> i'm just i i really have this issue day to day because some of our office mm. is that's on. the other thing i think in terms of linux versus windows right right that's the term i think of right right back is on linux Computers that uh, at the school are on Windows, so she's taking college. Right. She's got to send files in Windows doc format. So those are the terms I think of. There are mixed environments where you have all Windows, there but is half of the computers are using LibreOffice because Microsoft Office costs a couple hundred dollars. A couple hundred dollars per computer. There's only one computer in my whole office that can print the handouts I need, and it's mm. not my computer. <laughs> Right, and it's so, running Office, and you're right, on LibreOffice exactly. to, to save, to Be- reduce costs. Because yeah. of this exact issue that okay. I'm sure you guys were talking about yes. reading the comments from the yeah. actual... I haven't watched the show, but... All right, so what does Adam, Adam C. talk about? I found that Libre and Open Office to be more compatible with Microsoft Office than the iWork suite from Apple. I only encountered a few issues with Word and Excel when the document contained heavy formatting or calculations and macros that are heavily used and easily read by the Microsoft software. As mentioned in the video, I did encounter an issue with fonts and the size of slides when converting and saving something into PowerPoint. Looking forward to a follow-up. Very cool. Now, Becca actually had that issue because one of her school presentations was a PowerPoint presentation. Right. She says to me, can I do this? Because mm-hmm. she uses LibreOffice. And so I imported it. And sure enough, we had that issue, fonts, mm-hmm. because I didn't have Times New Roman on my Linux machine. Mm-hmm. And um, the slides were a little bit jumbled. Some of the text was overlapping and some of the pictures were in the wrong spot. So a couple of things that we noticed. One thing is that her computer is 4 over 3. It's a laptop that's 4 over 3 dimensions. Okay. The display here is, ni- uh, is 1920 by 1080, so 16 over right. 9, mm-hmm. widescreen. So, okay. so the slides are getting either stretched or having black bars on the side. So we had to convert it to 16 over 9, very easy to do. Right. And um, we had to get the font that was required in order to get it to work. And we're going to talk about that because I know a lot of folks have I mentioned need- the font. I, yeah. This is an issue. And I need to know the answer to this. So this is exciting. Well, and this... You know, particularly, a lot of these folks are talking from a Linux standpoint. Again, they're looking at it from my perspective of, I'm using Linux, they're using Windows, I need to be able to use files back and forth. Right. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily applicable to the environment where you've got all Windows computers and just LibreOffice on a couple of them. Right. So moving on to Blake HX's um, comments, because Adam C., just know that Blake's and David's comments kind of flow into yours as well. So this kind of all goes together. Right. So Blake HX says, I've only had minor issues with Libra and Open Office versus Microsoft Office. Some troubles with fonts and general layout, like mm-hmm. you mentioned. The most trouble has been on the Microsoft side. A couple times I've had to completely remove all formatting from text because lines or pictures kept overlapping and running into margins, etc. I've also also a few problems with custom colors and tables in Microsoft Word. Thankfully, the problems I've encountered haven't been too difficult to fix. Excellent point in that, hey, it's not that hard to correct these little anomalies. Yeah. Where it can become a problem is if you've got somebody who's really impatient and just wants to, you know, to be able to open it and doesn't want to mess around. Or, mm-hmm. yeah, doesn't know, right? Like, yeah, or doesn't I understand. I don't yeah. understand it. When I open something and the boxes that are usually boxes now have an X in them, I wonder my, to myself, like, that seems simple. Sure. But I need to know how to properly, without yeah. ruining the document, And that's fix likely it. a missing font. So, 
So if I if if I'm that person who is impatient and I and I have trouble and I send a file to Jeff and it's all garbled on his system, which is not garbled, but you know, right. text overlapping, text fonts not working, and everything like that. David Gregory says, um, why not export to a PDF file? Mm -hmm. Because a PDF file, no matter what, if I send it to you, if it's a tagged PDF, right. it will display correctly. Right. And when I say oh. tagged PDF, when you're in LibreOffice and you go file, save as, and you select the file format as PDF, one of the options is tagged PDF. Any oh. guesses what that means? No. No, no guesses? Okay. It, it, you don't have, so you on the receiving end don't have the fonts that I used on your computer, okay? Right. Maybe you don't have the images on your computer, so if it was a Word doc, it's going to have problems displaying these things. Right. So if you tag the PDF file, it will embed the fonts, and it will embed oh, smart. The, oh. the, um, the layout and the images in the file. Hmm. So when you send that file now, they don't need those fonts installed. Right. So that's a good solution Smart. if it's just to print. Right. But if they need to be able to edit it, then it's not a solution at all because PDF right. is typically, in a typical scenario, unless you've purchased Acrobat XI or something like that, for several hundred dollars again, which then why are you using LibreOffice? Because you obviously have disposable income. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not a solution for you. So Greg, uh, David Gregory goes on to say, what about installing MS Font Enabler and copy the fonts from Windows 10 and install it into the fonts directory on your Linux machine or Mac, presumably, slash user, slash share, slash fonts. Now, that is an old school way to do it, mm -hmm. and it will work. It yep. would work? Like, yeah. Would it be complicated for me it's to It's a do? little complicated, and it's a mm. little illegal. Oh, okay. Not like no. How is gonna, it illegal? You're taking Microsoft fonts from Windows 10. These are proprietary font files that you have to be licensed to have. I think that's crazy. You can find them all over the right, internet right, 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 as, right, right, as font files. So when you install Linux, because Linux is a free operating system, and they are all about, hey, if you install Linux, you're not breaching any copyrights. Everything right. is free. It's all open source. Right. But by the way. If you know how to do it, you can install some of those non-free things, like MP3 playback, mm. like right. VLC being able to play proprietary formats, or like Microsoft Core TTF fonts. Because Microsoft did, in fact, release web fonts to support like Arial and Times New Roman yeah. and Comic Sans MS, because we all need that. Um, <laughs> Right. <laughs> but on your Linux machine, it's important for you to be able to have those Windows fonts so that when someone, when Jeff sends me a Windows created doc file and has used Windows fonts, because maybe you use Verdana on your Windows machine. And so it looks good on your Windows machine, but then when you open it on Linux, on LibreOffice, you say, oh, the font has reverted to some default right. font. And so you blame LibreOffice and say it's not displaying correctly. Well, truth be told, it's that your system doesn't have a font installed that matches Verdana. Mm -hmm. So LibreOffice says, let's try to find something that's similar based on the type of font, be it a right. sans serif or something like that. But it's really just going to default to whatever you have installed. Correct. So I'm going to simply bring up Putty because I want to show you how easy it is on a Linux machine to install these Microsoft fonts, which this way is it's a non-free fonts file. And when on Linux, it's such a funny thing, right? Because I have to say non-free, and I have to do air quotes for those of you who are listening to the podcast. Air quotes. Non-free means it's not open source. It's not, it's right. not free free as in you're free to do everything with it and distribute it and sell it. Right. Linux is free in all essences. Um, with Microsoft stuff, it's free as in you can have it. It's yours. You can use it. Yeah. But it's not free as in freedom. Um, but you can, <laughs> you can install it and you can use it for free without having to pay cash. So two right. different, the English language maybe needs a new word for Libre. <laughs> let's, let's use that, okay? Right. Uh, for free. There needs to be two words for free. I'm going to jump onto my server here. Hi, chat room. Nice to see you. I'm going to just jump over to my computer here and hop onto my server, which I think is... Do, 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 do. Let's try five. Wouldn't it help if I knew the IP address of my server? Let's ping it. That would help. 
I've named my server. You mm -hmm. ready for this? Worf. Worf. <laughs> That's awesome. Lieutenant Worf is 10.0.0.10. There we go. Okay, putty. 10.0.0.10. And we'll accept the certificate. Yes. Where's my mouse? Come on. All right. Okay, I'm on Worf. I need to become super user. On Debian, it's SU. On Linux, it's going to... On, uh, on Linux. On Ubuntu, it's going to be sudo su, su. Okay, so I'm going to go su on Debian, which is what I'm on. Enter my root password. Okay, now, apt update. This is going to download all of the current packages from the repositories of Debian. Okay, same commands on Ubuntu. A little different if you're on like OpenSUSE or uh, Red Hat or CentOS or whatever. But if you're on a Debian derivative, this is how you do it. Um, so now I'm going to go apt install. Now I say this is how you do it on Debian. You can use any package manager, so it doesn't matter if you're using YUM or Synaptic or whatever you're using. What is key is knowing the package name. And that package name is pretty easy to remember. It's simply ttf-ms for Microsoft core fonts dash installer. And when I hit enter on that, it's going to say, hey, this is going to install this on your computer. It's going to use a meg. Say yes. <laughs> Let's see what happens. So this package, ttf-ms core fonts dash installer, is giving me actually Let's see my list. Andal Mono, Arial, Comic Sans MS, Courier New, Georgia, Impact, Times New Roman, tri Trebuchet? 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 Trebuchet. Trebuchet. And what's the last one? No, no, there's two more. Verdana and Webdings. Webdings. Yeah. That's important. All right. Whoever uses Webdings. Sasha does. That's what those little boxes are with the Yeah, X it turns them. out that I use Webdings. There you go. Yeah. So you need it but it comes in this package. So it's actually <laughs> installing all of those fonts that I just mentioned on my Linux machine. See, it's doing Times New Roman. It downloaded an EXE file. That's crazy talk. But that's on Debian, so that's what I'm using. Now, I'm doing it in a terminal. You can do this on a GUI system. And of course, those fonts don't affect my terminal. They affect my GUI. Right. Mm -hmm. Can you do this for me at work? You don't have Linux at work, Sasha. Oh, I'm what sorry. do I have at work? But you could get fonts. We'll just have to find okay. a different way. Okay. Yeah, it's a little different. You're on here. Windows 10 at work. Oh, well, yeah, no, I know that. Yeah, you've got these fonts. I, yeah. No, I don't, I, I don't have, I have well like... Well done. I don't have Microsoft Office. Yeah, but the fonts Libre come in... Office. I have LibreOffice. Yeah, so but those fonts are still within Windows. So you check in, in your control panel, go to fonts, uh -huh. and check for webdings and things like that. Yeah. And oh, okay. if you don't have it, then you can install it. We can talk about that. On Windows, it's a little bit different. It's different? Okay. But you, you could, as Jeff had mentioned, you can readily get these off of the internet, double click on it, and click install, and it okay. will install it for you. But there's probably an alternative as well. Like if there's a box that has a question mark through it, you can highlight it, find out what font it was, and Google for an alternative. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I always went to, when I used to do a lot of graphics work, I would grab a lot of my fonts from... Uh, what was it at the time? 10,000fonts.com or something oh, yes. was the website. Because yep. people would upload their own versions of fonts. You can get the coolest stuff out there. It was great. Huh. You, so you can even really find like something that are really close now, to it. Remember, if you, <clears throat> if you do that, you take that approach, you find a really cool font, you install it on your computer, you use it in your document, and then you send that document to someone else, they, they don't, don't have, have that font. <laughs> so tag right. it. So you're back to the problem. Right. Um, but that said, you can print out some pretty stuff. Yeah, I love Google Web Fonts. I use it for websites, but you'll notice that if you find a font you like, there's also a download link that allows you to download the TTF file. Yes, that's right. Yes. So that's another way to get free fonts. Mm -hmm.